Hey, hello everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all well and that you're all having a great day. Welcome back to another news I missed where I talk about the news that was in the news that I happened to end up missing. And without further ado, let's jump right into for some odd reason. This is always popular news. Kraken, a popular cryptocurrency trading platform based in Northern California, is laying off more than 1,000 employees as it attempts to deal with the ongoing crypto winter. The crypto exchange says that the maneuver has nothing to do with the fall of FTX. Uh, one, for those of you who are confused, for some reason, every, every time we get layoff news, it ends up being one of the most popular things in the cryptocurrency space. I'm not sure why. Maybe I simply don't know a number of people who like this news themselves, but for some reason, this always ends up being popular. Uh, and two, this is the first company in nearly three months who has announced that this move has nothing to do with FTX. Uh, you might have seen my last video where I maybe, maybe, I might have ranted, I did, where I was talking about every single person has basically blamed the collapse of the last 19 companies that failed on FTX. So kudos to Kraken for not blaming their faults on someone else. The exchange, FTX is still talking about it, collapsed in mid-November and has sent ripples through the space, making several other firms such as BlockFi, follow in its footsteps and file for bankruptcy. However, Kraken wants to make it clear that this has nothing to do with FTX, once again, golf clap. Rather, the crypto winter has not subsided and the company is working to ensure it can stay afloat while the market repairs itself. A spokesperson for the firm said, no, Kraken was already reviewing its business and workforce needs when news of the FTX bankruptcy were made public. Kraken has no material exposure to FTX. I mean, they must watch my videos. If you are a Kraken employee, hello out there. Uh, because, you know, and it, it's, so, it's so important to be able to differentiate between like uh, when a company is just saying like, no, like, listen, we don't have as much money as we thought we were going to have. So we need to, you know, make some layoffs as opposed to being like, oh, that Sam Bankman freed. Look at what he's making me do. I can't believe it. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, so um, we recently had news that Coinbase is, I think it was Coinbase. I'm pretty sure. I think they're letting go, was it 38% or something like that of their workforce? Gemini's doing the same. There's another exchange following in the footsteps, and a bunch of other companies are also laying off. The only one we still haven't heard from. Uh, is is uh, Beyonce, and um, I think they're only hiring at this point. So, interesting. Kraken is specifically pointing the finger at macroeconomic and geopolitical factors as the reason behind its new string of layoffs. With more than 1,000 people saying goodbye to their jobs with the exchange, the company is losing approximately 30... Yeah, so, yeah, they're... they're, they're well, anyway, they're losing 30% of their workforce... Uh, but for some reason, this seems to be the number across all the exchanges. It's between 20 to 30% of people are being laid off. It's very, very sad. I can't personally help that this is always um, most popular news in some sort of way. I personally don't get it. But maybe it makes people more aware of the security of their own jobs. Or I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really sure. But this is like, this is similar to the... Uh, Shiba Inu and Terra Luna coin burn news, like how it's just kind of there every single day and you kind of wonder why. That's the Kraken layoff news. Sure. Let's move on. Also in the news, the world's largest crypto exchange is reportedly close to completing the acquisition of something called Gopax, that is G-O-P-A-X, one of the most used Korean exchanges, if closed, the deal will signify Binance's entrance into the South Korean market. Citing a report by a local media news outlet, the popular blockchain journalist Colin Wu 
informed everyone that Binance has recently completed due diligence on the acquisition of GoPax. It says, according to the dissenter, that is DE Center, Binance has recently completed due diligence on the acquisition of GoPax, which is one of the five major South Korean exchanges. They're UpBit, BitSum, CoinOne, CoreBit, and GoPax. I wonder why they have weird abbreviation names, like those. It, it seems like they're words, but they're not really words. They're like five things that have been smashed into smaller, uh, cutesier sounding things. Binance previously announced the acquisition of exchanges in Japan and Indonesia. The coverage said Binance plans to announce the purchase around Christmas. Whoa, okay, that's definitely... Oh, planned. Duh, duh. Past tense. I was like, well, they're a bit late. But it was delayed due to last-minute discussions around the value of the deal. Uh, so cool. Binance is basically the largest only crypto exchange on the planet at this point. So the idea of an acquisition isn't really that surprising, especially if they're trying to do it in multiple other countries at the exact same time. So cool. I guess this is the Binance is getting richer and is owning everything news. I don't know where to really categorize this one. Have you ever seen... Okay, here's a weird one for you. Have you ever seen, um, especially if you live in the States, how many companies actually control uh, like the chicken market in America? So if, if you've never been to the States before... The the, the, the the supermarkets there are like the size of like 12 supermarkets everywhere else. I'm, I'm not, I wish I was joking. And there's always like a meat section in the supermarket and it's huge. And then you see like at least there's, you know, all the frozen different types of foods and meals, all the things that have to do with chicken. Uh, you would normally assume with the 800 products that there are to actually buy uh, that there, you know, that there's hundreds of companies actually doing it. Nope, there's one company and it starts with a P and ends with a do. If you if you know what I'm talking about, you definitely are from the States. Um, and they actually own, I think, every or 99% of all the chicken companies uh, in America. So it's kind of the, you know, uh, what is it called? The 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 idea of or like the, 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 the illusion of choice is what you would call it. So every single time that we get news that Binance or Coinbase or someone else is acquiring another company... Like, if you heard GoPax, you would not think Binance, but now you will because they're basically trying to own everything. The point is, uh, in this world, a lot of times uh, you are believed to have, like, some type of choice as you're choosing things. And then you come to realize, nope, everything is just owned by usually, like, five or six different companies. Look into how many uh, families own the, the media in uh, America. I'll give you a hint. Uh, it's more than two and less than four. That's the Binance is buying, and I'm not joking either. That's the Binance is buying another cryptocurrency exchange, and maybe we'll get news of it in the relative near future because it's definitely past Christmas news. Yeah. Let's move on. Also, and I thought this was a joke. Nope, this is real. The team behind Shiba Inu has confirmed a new partnership between the meme-inspired cryptocurrency and the North American luxury brand Bugatti Group. Yep, you heard that correctly. Um, this was a rumor for like a couple of weeks. We get a lot of rumors in the space. Uh, this one just happened to be true. Shiba Inu has actually partnered with Bugatti. The partnership, according to a thread on the SHIB account, shared with over 3.6 million followers on the Twitter, okay, said there will be a special event in which the Bugatti group will host a mint party and space dedicated to Shiboshis. I assume those are people who have SHIBs. Shiboshis, oh no, something, nope, 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 I was wrong. Shiboshis, that is SHIB and then O-S-H-I-S, are NFTs, there we go, exclusive to the Shiba Inu ecosystem that were launched back in 2022. Per the thread, the partnership will bring physical items and collectible NFTs to Shiboshi holders. And here's the tweet right here. It says, Shib Token Shiboshi's X Bugatti Group Special Edition release 
We're excited to announce our upcoming special event in which Bugatti Group will host a mint party in space dedicated to our Shiboshis. And then there's a photo of a, 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 a blue face squared man who's smiling at his angry looking dog. And then is, I think that's a briefcase who's holding a love potion. I'm not really sure what this photo is supposed to, supposed to actually be. According to Shib, there will only be 299 NFTs released. And a very exclusive first edition release with the mint price somewhere around 0.14 ETH. Roughly around $187 right now. Shib added that 95% of the mints will receive a cross-body limited edition luggage bag from Bugatti Group. On the other hand, 5% of all mints will receive a limited edition carry-on item from the group. There will be reward. These will be rewarded to 15 NFT minters and allow them to place their own Shiboshi design on the bag. Oh, okay, that's kind of cool. That's actually kind of cool to be able to have your NFT officially be one of 15 different ones on a Bugatti bag. And that would be basically the only one in the entire world. That's kind of cool. So yeah, this was, as you might have imagined, this was from days and days ago when it was first uh, uh, thrown out there that there might be the possibility of them working with Bugatti. I'm sure no one expected that news. Like how many people out there were like, Shiba Inu is definitely going to be in the news today because they're working with Bugatti. Put your hand down. I know that one person's lying. You had no idea. Listen, this is, this is, this is absolutely insane. So cool. The, the coin that was supposed to be a meme is now getting more and more attention i wonder where this coin once again where this coin is going to be during the like the next bull bull run because it's a little insane how much uh popularity this coin has right now that's the shiba inu is officially working with bugatti group yeah let's move on Also in the news, and I was actually quite shocked at this one, on Monday, Paul Chan, Hong Kong's financial secretary, reaffirmed the region's dedication to developing into a major crypto powerhouse. To investigate the possibility of retail engagement in the sector, that's normal people, Hong Kong has also encouraged crypto firms and startups to provide services. As regulators are now ready, to give licenses to crypto companies, cryptocurrency exchanges may now register under the present licensing scheme. Bloomberg reported on the 9th of January that Hong Kong's financial secretary Paul Chan reaffirmed the city's commitment to developing into a worldwide crypto powerhouse at the Hong Kong Web3 Innovator Summit. I say that I was shocked at this news because uh, historically especially the last two years, Ali, if you've been paying attention to the news, uh, usually what happens above Hong Kong is now being forced into their borders. Uh, some would even say 15 to 20 years early, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, however, the country above has all but banned crypto, so the surprise is, is that it would be allowed in the lower country uh, simply because, once again, if you've been paying attention to the news, that hasn't been uh, the normal flow of what's been taking place. There's been a lot of talk about Hong Kong being the new home base or major growth point for a number of major IT companies and startups. In addition, cryptocurrency exchanges have shown an interest in expanding into the area which would be beneficial to the growth of the industry there. If they happen to do it, uh, we already look like we're on the, and I won't use the word cusp because I know I use the cusp all the time. It looks like Asia is going to be taking over again. I don't know how to really, you know, sugarcoat that one. Uh, many years ago, it was uh, Japan and South Korea were the leaders of the cryptocurrency space. It's abundantly clear at this point, at least to me, we are going to, if this actually ends up going through, there's an enormous amount of money in Hong Kong. And even money from the north may even be allowed to legally go through Hong Kong, which would also set off a whole bunch of other like spikes in prices and things like that. 
I have a very strange feeling we're going to have a very uh, strong narrative shift over the course of this year and next year. As not only are regulations finally, like, officially rolling out, uh, but also a lot of countries have uh, positioned themselves in a very good spot to basically be able to take over the industry uh, when prices actually end up recovering, recovering. That's the Hong Kong's financial secretary. What's his name? Uh, Paul something. Where's his name? Paul Chan is talking about that they're trying to make Hong Kong into a Web3 powerhouse place. All right. Let's move on. Also, in this was super popular news. Let me see if you can guess why. Former Barclays CEO Bob Diamond, very rich name, believes that digital currencies will play a major role in the financial sector despite adverse market conditions. According to the Financial Times, Diamond said, I can't think of anyone who doesn't believe that in the future a digital version of the dollar for institutional and corporate use isn't going to happen and be far more efficient. Additionally, Diamond suggested that digital currencies, especially stablecoins, will become a widespread and efficient way for institutions and corporations to conduct transactions in the future. Adding more power to stablecoins, Diamond's comment about stablecoins futures were made shortly after his capital market company, Concord Acquisition, failed to seal a $9 billion deal to make Circle, the USDC issuer, list public in the stock market. As noted in a press release by Circle, Circle and Concord Acquisition mutually agreed to terminate the proposed business. I wonder what happened. I, I wonder what causes you to like end a $9 billion deal. Imagine imagine you're on the side that was going to receive the $9 billion. You'd be a little sad. Like imagine like a deal for like $3 million. Now imagine $9 billion. You're like, can, can, you, can you reconsider? Can we, can we have half? Can we have some of it? Citing the adverse crypto market conditions that led to the lack of investor demand in their proposal. Ah, okay. As a result, the transaction timed out. Okay. So there was supposed to be multiple rich other people who were going to be jumping forward onto this acquisition as well. The market's down, the interest low, therefore people didn't want it. But the, the funny part is people will want to rebuy Circle when the market goes back up. And I assume the, the $9 billion valuation will be a little bit higher than the $9 billion that it currently is. If, if it's valued at $9 billion when the market's down, imagine if prices 10, 15, or 20x. I, I don't know. They should have taken it for, for $9 billion. Uh, this was very popular. It's basically a rich guy news. If you haven't been in crypto for a while, a lot of people in crypto worship these people who they'll never know, they'll never hang out with. But anytime that any rich person says anything positive about the cryptocurrency space, people go bananas for it. So this is another one. His name is also Diamond. So that, you know, that definitely shows that he has money because that's how names work. Isn't that kind of weird? Diamond? It's kind of like, remember, probably no one remembers this. I think last January, that is to say 2022 January, there was some news that came out about um, Sam Bankman Freed. And I remember laughing because I was like, his name is Bankman? And, and somebody else was like, yeah. And I was like, no, 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 like, like his name is Bankman. Like every, there, there, there's so many rich people who have these like money things attached to their name. And I also thought his last name was Fried. So I thought it was Sam Bankman Fried. Yeah, that was a long time ago. That's the former Barclays chief is optimistic about cryptos. Because I assume he has a lot of them. And I assume, well, I mean, we don't even have to assume he was trying to acquire Circle. And that was a $9 billion deal. So we can all safely assume he probably owns about 10 other companies that he was able to acquire for $50 million, $14 million. Remember when the whole fiasco, listen, pay attention. Remember when the whole fiasco was happening uh, last uh, November and December? And a lot of crypto companies were being bought up by Binance because we heard that their valuation for the company was $1.5 billion, FTX fell, and then Binance was acquiring them for $15 million? I don't know. This is all kind of fishy to me. That's the Barclays news. 
I don't know. It's a little, it's a little, little, little fishy in the room. All right. Let's move on. Here's a really good one. Uh, we could have all expected this. It's, it was going to happen. What an odd photo. It's a, For those of you not looking at the screen, it's a photo of Sam Bankman Freed sitting in between two models who are clapping. I don't know what that's... Why is this a photo? It says, Hollywood is drawn to stories that have drama at their core. That's an understatement. That's why you saw a number of films, TV shows, and documentaries about Theranos and the scandal from it. Here we go. Now it's time for a crypto exchanges story to be told on the silver screen. Yep, you guessed it right. There's going to be about 9,000 different things that are going to be talking about FTX. Apparently, um, the renowned author Michael Lewis, uh, author of such books as The Big Short, Moneyball, and Flash Boys, that's a weird name, is apparently writing a book on or about Sam Bankman Freed and the entire FTX debacle. According to a letter circulated by his agency, CAA, Lewis spent six months traveling with and it, Oh, that's going to be interesting. I would watch that one. He spent six months traveling with and interviewing Sam Bankman Freed. He even visited the FTX CEO after his arrest. Ooh, and interviewed him for several hours. Whoa. See, that one sounds kind of good. I don't want a book of that. I want a movie. I want like a nice two and a half. That, that, that sounds like. Someone who hung out with the guy for six months, he has seen some stuff. That's what I, oh, that, okay, that one sounds good. Number two is apparently Amazon Prime is making something. Amazon Studios has commissioned a mini series on FTX's downfall and has roped in Joe and Anthony Russo. Okay, known for the last two, they're, what? They're known for the last two Avengers movies. What are they gonna, is he, what, will they dress him up like a superhero? That's a weird choice for the Russo brothers will provide the eight, geez, eight episodes through their production venture, Abgo, according to Variety. Apparently, Vice Media and tech business publication, The Information, are producing a documentary titled Sam Bankman Freed and the End of Silicon Valley. That is so intense. Slated for quarter two. Of, I'm so excited for all of these. You have no idea. Slated for quarter two, <laughs> quarter two of, of 2023, according to The Hollywood Reporter. The documentary will scrutinize FTX's inexperienced leadership. Oh my gosh, they're going to make him look so so ridiculous. I wonder, in all these instances, like who's going to be playing Sam Bankman Freed? I can't think of like a Hollywood actor who would like be able to like portray him properly. Jonah Hill? I can, I oh yeah, we can all see Jonah Hill. I can see Jonah Hill playing him. Abs absolutely. Uh Graham Moore, the Oscar-winning writer of The Imitation Game, is going to write and direct an adaptation of New York Magazine's cover story on FTX's collapse. He has yet to decide whether the project would be a feature film or a television series. I mean, it's probably going to be a TV series just so they can make more money because we don't we don't need... I mean, anyway. Um, also, New York Magazine is also making a documentary as well. Uh, working, and they're working with Vox on a documentary on the downfall of F SBF and his crypto empire. You know, either way, these things are going to be so ridiculously dramatic, but we're all going to be watching it, at least me. I like, I, do, b b b between documentaries and like really dramatic, like real life stories, I don't know why I find them interesting. I was chatting with my friend and I, at least years ago, I used to be really into heist movies, like intelligent, like let's go get that gigantic diamond with our playing cards walking upside down in the ceiling. Like I, I find all that stuff very weird and interesting, especially when it's actually a real story. And I was telling my friend, I said, you know what, like what's the saddest part is that there have been so many like successful heists in the world and we'll never know about them because it was a success. These people, you know, they've disappeared. They're, they're in the Bahamas or they're somewhere else. I always find that very interesting that, you know, there are, regardless of how many movies that we've gotten and the people end up getting caught and they go, yeah, it's been 15 years and I'm a nice person now. What about the people who didn't get caught, who got the diamonds and the jewels and the rubies and then just disappeared? I like, I, 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 I find it interesting. That's the, we know of at least five things that are going to be happening for Sam Bankman Freed. Uh, we're still waiting Still waiting for the Gemini Twins' movie on the, uh, what's it called? On the Robin Hood um, 
GameStop documentary, and it was also rumored before that the Gemini Twins, because they want to do everything, that the Gemini Twins are also making their own uh, documentary on this as well, because you have to save face. You know, if, if you're working with all these people, you have to make it. That's the the Sam Bankman Freed uh, TV show book, Amazon end of Silicon Valley movie news. Yeah. Let's move on. In probably one of my favorite news stories of the day, Nepal, that is N-E-P-A-L, has taken an additional significant step to ensure that the technology of cryptocurrencies and blockchains will not be implemented anywhere within their borders. To its purpose, the Nepalese Telecommunications Authority has issued an order mandating that all internet service providers, ISPs, immediately stop any and all activity related to cryptocurrencies that take place on the internet. Can anyone guess why this is my favorite story? So I remember reading something. This was maybe three or four years ago. I don't have the time frame, but I know it wasn't definitely during the Roro. Um, and they, it, 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 it was a discussion about the popularity and the importance of the internet. And they were stating that in the beginning of the internet as we know it right now, like when Windows 95 came out and everyone was getting like, you know, their own home personal PCs and stuff like that. There were a number of countries around the world who actually were considering banning the internet. As weird as that sounds... It's because there was such a gigantic monopoly in many different companies, countries by a single company who had control over the telecommunications network that they didn't want anything new like that. They thought it would take away from people actually using their systems. There's a really famous story from the 1980s, I, I think. I think it was AT&T. It wasn't Verizon. It was AT&T and... Belgram? Like, what, what was the other one from the 80s that was really popular in America? Bell South. Bell, Bell South. I, 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 anyway, the point is, they figured out that there were companies who were developing and building the internet. And they tried to stop people from actually even being able to use these things. That's why when you see those old articles that people now make fun of, like, watch the internet. Do we need it? Or, or the people on the news being like, I don't want to use the internet. What's an email? I'd rather write a letter out. That, you know, all those things that we saw years and years and years ago. You can find the videos as well on YouTube. This was all done as propaganda and tactics by the people who owned these news stations and the newspapers to try and discourage people from using the internet. Because they knew that this was going to completely take over. Like, how many of you actually still have a home phone? Like, you know, like one that plugs into your wall. I don't know anyone except for my grandmother and my aunt who have that. No one else has a plug-in phone because we, at the moment, do not really need them. We have a mobile phone. The entire point is, bringing it on back in the thing that I was reading, they were discussing how the world changed not only from the internet, but if certain countries on the planet had not adopted the internet. This is something that we don't think of. It seems just almost logical that the internet evolved with us. No, 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 no. France was a country back in the early 90s who was actually considering banning the internet. They said it was bad. People would use it for illicit purposes, whatever lies that they had to actually tell. And there were allegedly discussions within France to block the internet. Now, imagine for a second if France did not have the internet. Imagine going, imagine going to France, everyone sitting at a cafe, reading newspapers, and you try to show them your mobile phone and the news that's on it, and they're terrified. What, what are you showing me? How do you have this information? It seems weird to think about. To think of, a, imagine a country on the planet that had no access to internet. Like, I get annoyed sometimes if I go to a hotel or someplace and either the, the Wi-Fi is not working or if I'm in the woods or something and I, and I don't have Wi-Fi or internet connection there. Now imagine having nothing. How li You would be li basically living in the Stone Ages if you did not have internet. Over the course of the last couple of years within the cryptocurrency space, we have had more 
more than our fair share of countries around the world who have been adamant that they do not like, do not want cryptocurrencies within their country. The idea of cryptocurrencies is usually very static in a lot of people's minds. It's simply a digital coin that you're using to pay money with back and forth. When we first had the first iterations of the internet, it was MSN, it was Yahoo News, it was Ask Jeeves. I forgot about Ask Jeeves. And it was also AOL for those of you who lived in the States. Look at how it transformed into what we have now. We are literally on the cusp of major companies about to give us uh, augmented reality glasses and, and, uh, and contact lenses and all these other headset devices to be able to see the world in a brand new light and it's only through the internet. So all that stuff that we had was 0.1 and now we're entering, air quotes, web 3.0, if you will. So imagine the iterations, if you think about the current movements of crypto, it's no longer just coins. The idea, it's also, it's also digital art. It's also smart contracts. The idea is in the future. Here's a really, you know, we, we, we've been talking about this one for years. It's just a matter of, I think, the world also catching up to it. You are now able to, and will be more so able to do in the future, you'll be able to check out a place online that you want to buy. I, I, this place is beautiful. I really want to buy it. You'll be able to go and look at all of the uh, sch schematics on it, put on a headset, or turn on your Apple Glasses device and walk through the apartment. You'll see it. In real time, you'll be able to look at and see everything in great detail. You'll be able to then go, I think I'm going to buy this. They'll ask you how you want to pay. You say you want to pay in this. For instance, you want to pay in Bitcoin or Ether. It's done by a smart contract. It's done all automatically. And instead of having to wait weeks or months for your transaction to go through or for everything to happen, it's yours. Because it was done by an automatic smart contract. That's the future that we're going to be living in. Like, it's all these ideas that will stem from blockchain. Now, imagine banning all of that in your country. I like this news not because they're banning crypto, because I am so interested to see what happens to this country that isn't adopting what every other country is adopting. Every bank Every institution. How many how many times have we heard about BlackRock and Fidelity and the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ and this and that and this country, the countries who are buying up Bitcoin, who are mining crypto? If crypto takes off, if we get to a million dollar Bitcoin, we will have tons of millionaires and billionaires being minted around the world from this technology. What happens to Nepal and their citizens when they're not part of this new revolution. That's what, that's what excites me. So it's this really weird, I'm excited to see what happens in 10 to 15 years to their country when they're just no longer part of this new future economy. Per the mandate, the regulatory body requested that the ISPs completely shut down anything that could propagate crypto in any way. What, what year are they living in? This encompasses every application, website, and even online network that uses cryptography. It's important to stress that this most recent action is merely evidence of the country's unfriendly stance. What? Unfriendly? I would have never gotten that. Stance towards cryptocurrency. Anyway, and apparently also in September 2021, the central bank uh, prohibited any activities relating to crypto. Cool. Please go for it. Please, 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 please. I, I, I was waiting. I was waiting for something like I was literally waiting for something like this to happen. It's going to be a very interesting future for them. If crypto takes off, imagine for a moment. Imagine for a moment there are only 21 million Bitcoin. Imagine in 10 years, Bitcoin has completely taken off. The value's not super stable, but we're floating anywhere from 800,000 to 1 million basically all the time, depending on fluctuations. But Bitcoin's still super big. A lot of countries have adopted it. A lot of countries are using it as, as a base for their stable coin or for their currency, you name it. Imagine basically all the Bitcoin on the world has been allocated to whoever is going to have it and or own it. What happens to Nepal? 
when they when, when they try to imagine being a country and the most you can afford is like a million satoshis and you're like hey we got some we did it we're not we're not that far behind anymore i'm very fascinated i don't know if you could tell by the tone of my voice i've been waiting for something like this to happen that's the please go for it i mean so we 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 didn't see france can you imagine if france had banned the oh my gosh it's so funny if they had banned the internet but listen, please, by all means, ban crypto. Go for it. You weren't that important anyway. No one's, you know, we don't have daily news talking about like the, n- the, the, n- <laughs> I'm so excited. Talking about Nepal and like what they're doing with crypto or how big their economy is and how, you know, if Nepal was swinging the cryptocurrency market, I'd be terrified. I assume they have less than 1% of 1% of all cryptocurrency transactions or volume flowing through it. So please, you know, mess your whole country up. That's the Nepal news. Wonderful. I'm so excited. Moving along. Yeah. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. Joy, joy, joy. I do hope you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, and or evening, wherever you are, wherever the heck you might be on this weird planet. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting, or all three. And I will most certainly, look at this, what is this, what, what's, what's, what, what, what's, what's this, what's this? Certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.